All right. Ms. Hall, um, good, good morning. Unmute yourself. Let me. Oops, I keep doing, I'm sorry. It's my fault, Ms. Hall. Go, unmute yourself again. I'm sorry. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Um, Ms. Hall, um, the, all of the lawyers from the defender's office are in a breakout room right now. And I wanted to, I brought you out of the waiting room though to ask you if you wanted to go ahead and proceed. Mr. Thomas is the stand-in probation officer today and he did indicate that you will be, uh, he's recommending you to be discharged from probation. So are you comfortable proceeding without the lawyer? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, this is case number uh, 1958925, the people of the state of Michigan versus Glenda Hall, the defendant is, oh wait, this is Mr. Quinn anyway. Your lawyer was Mr. Quinn? Yes. Okay, well, he's not checked in either, but, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, so are you still comfortable? Cause I, it was Mr. Quinn, but he didn't check in and it's still a recommendation for discharge. Yes. Okay. So this is um, the defendant is charged with this orderly person and today is the date set for review. Appearances, please. Joseph Thomas on behalf of the probation department, your honor. And then your name, ma'am. Belinda Hall. Okay, today is the day set for review. Mr. Thomas. Good morning, your honor. This defendant was placed on a term of 12 months probation back on September 26, 2019. Uh, in that time, they were to attend six weeks anger management and continue with mental health services that they were seeking, at, seeing at the time. They were also to pay $1,110 to the court. Uh, probation is happy to say that the defendant has complied with all the conditions of probation. They have paid all fines, costs, and fees owed to the court. Uh, they have no new offenses per a criminal history check. At this time, the probation department would recommend that she be discharged from probation. This is a standard probation. I don't see any uh, MCLs checked okay, off great. here. Okay. Um, then today is the date set for review. And Ms. Hall, the probation department has indicated that you have completed all the terms and conditions of your probation satisfactorily. Congratulations. Um, the court is therefore satisfied, and I will discharge you from probation with improvement. Um, and close the case out. Ms. Hall, uh, we are live on YouTube, so please give me the numbers only, the numbers only, the numbers only to your street address. 18620. Madam Clerk? That's correct. All right, we will send you a copy of the um, probation discharge to that address, okay, ma'am? All right, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Have a great day. You too. All right, and it looks like Mr. Murad is back. And so I'm going to um, go back on the record with respect to Mr. Watkins. All right, so um, we're back on the record with respect to case number 1761404. Appearances again, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Derek Farmer on behalf of probation. And Ryan Murad, PA 3665 on behalf of Mr. Thaddeus Watkins. Uh, and your name, Murad. sir? Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Thaddeus Watkins. Okay, Mr. Farmer. Your Honor, today is the date time set for review for Mr. Watkins. He has been on probation since 2019. He was ordered to complete parenting classes and anger management classes, as well as uh, community service. To date, we have proof of the defendant completing the 40 hours of community service, as well as he is continuing into the anger management. I do believe he have roughly six or seven classes before he's completed with that. The parenting classes, however, I'm not showing that has been completed yet. All right, so um, you said he has about six or seven anger management classes left? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and then was he imposed any fines and costs? 
the fines, costs, and fees, I believe, were taken care of because of the community service, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. And then what about drug screening? He wasn't ordered drug screening? He was ordered to drug screen. Uh, we just re-referred him out. Uh, he was, Drug screens prior to the shutdown were negative. We never had any issue with him. Okay. All right. Great. Mr. Murat. Um, Your Honor, so after a conversation with my client, um, he indicates that he has completed his anger management classes. However, does, uh, like Mr. Farmer uh, said, have eight more parenting classes to complete? Uh, I don't know if we can, uh, if we have to reach out to eBay or if Mr. Watkins has anything he can send over to Mr. Farmer. But uh, we're just going to be asking for an eight week adjournment for him to finish those parenting classes. And by then, I believe he'd be able to have all the proof over to Mr. Farmer. <laughs> Is that where he was doing the anger management was through eBay? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Watkins. <laughs> okay, so so then yes, let's, okay, so Mr. Watkins, you need to um, coordinate with Mr. Farmer to make sure that he has the, the proof from eBay, make sure eBay is, is, has record that you completed the anger management. My philosophy is that if there's no record of it, you didn't do it. So. Even if you went there, if if you forgot to sign in or they they didn't, I mean, somebody has to send me proof that you completed those classes. Yes, what, Mr. Watkins. Um, what is what is the eBay that that you're talking about? He said you were supposed to. Do, how many weeks was he supposed to do? Twelve, Your Honor. So you were doing twelve, Miss Yider. You have let me put her in the in the waiting room. She is walking all the way around. I can't do that. Okay, you were supposed to complete 12 weeks of anger management plus parenting classes. Correct. Mr. I completed, Farmer, I completed the 12. Says, I'm sorry. Right. Mr. Farmer says he, he, he doesn't have record that you completed the anger management. So you need to make sure that eBay sends him proof of your completion of anger management so that you don't have to repeat it. Because my position is that if there's no proof, you have to repeat it. So somebody got to give you a completion certificate. Okay. Okay. Is eBay the Pam's place? Is is that the same thing we talking about? Because no. I Pam's right. place. It looks like he was taking them both at Pam's place. He was referred yeah, I, to eBay. However, he went to Pam's place. Oh, so he was taking Pam's place for anger management and and um parenting. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so then Pam's place. So forget what we said about eBay. Then okay, you, that's, that's why I was confused. Okay, yeah. you were doing it at Pam's place. So Pam's place has to give us proof that you completed the anger management, um, and then you can finish the um, parenting classes. So it seems like you've done everything, and and now I'm also clear as to why it's on this docket and not Judge um, Garrett's docket. So we're going to adjourn. This is, all right, so let's adjourn one, two, three. That puts us in March. Uh, Madam Clerk, what do I look like on those Thursdays in March? Maybe the beginning with the second Thursday, the 11th, 18th, and 25th, which is the best day for me? The 11th, you don't have anything. All right, we're going to set the review. I'll extend this probation to March 11th. And the review will be at 9.30. And as long as you've completed those classes and we have proof of the completion of the anger management, then the court will discharge you from probation. And this case will be dismissed and removed from your record, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, so I'll see you March 11th, and then Mr. Farmer, you have the you have his contact information, correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, then we're all set. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank you. All right. All right. I'm going to admit the jail, and then are we ready on Mosley? Ready on Mosley, Honor. And I okay. believe that's it for me, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Well, good to see you. Um, good to see Mr. you. Happy Farmer. holidays. Happy holidays. 
Okay, this is this is uh, Mac Shekels, case number one eight four six two nine eight. The defendant is charged with assault, assault and battery in the day of the day of the at that jail. Oh my. Okay. Sir, go ahead and say your name so I can mute you. My name is Matt Shackles. Ooh. All right. And today is the day set for pretrial. Appearances, please. May it please this honorable court, Darnell Barton, P83363, on behalf of the people, Your Honor. And for the record, Your Honor, Janice Stevenson, P57708, appearing on behalf of Matt Shekels, who is incarcerated in the Wayne County Jail and appears via Zoom. All right. Um, and I've already had Mr. Shekels say his name. So today is the date set for... Pre-trial, how are we proceeding? Thank you, Your Honor. We have a- uh, No, not uh, you, Mr. Barry. Not oh, I'm you. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm on Mr. Shekels. All right, Judge. That's okay. Ms. Stevenson, how are we proceeding? Thank you, Your Honor. On behalf of Mr. Shekels, Your Honor, we believe uh, there to be no complaining witness present. And I think that should be a Ms. Dan Leona Rayford and Mr. Stanley Rayford, um, those complaining witness not, witnesses not being present today, Your Honor, today's pretrial conference having been set, I believe, December 23rd, we would move that this matter be dismissed for complainant's failure to appear in the alternative, Your Honor, Mr. Shekels will continue his plea of not guilty. We respectfully ask that today's pretrial conference be adjourned uh, for the shortest period of time possible, that the complaining witness's presence be required at that next pretrial date, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Barton. Yes, Your Honor. I don't have any information on my file here that says they appeared on the, I believe, the January 2020 date. This was a year prior to this date. Uh, but I do know that we talked I mean, to the that, that keep walking past my, my camera while we in court. Okay, I'm sorry. You said what? I, no, no, no problem, Your Honor. Essentially, what I'm saying, Your Honor, is that uh, we spoke with the complaining witness uh, prior to COVID, who is also the defendant's, uh, excuse me, the Yes, the defendant's father-in-law. Um, so he just essentially want, wanted to propose a deal to help the young man. So I would respectfully ask for another opportunity for him to appear should he need to so that the plea deal that we offered prior to this date, uh, which was anger management and drug screening, um, I believe that might be beneficial uh, to the defendant in this case. So we would respectfully ask for another opportunity to have the complaining witness appear so that we can continue with the pretrial uh, agreement. So based on Mr. Barton's comments, that means that Mr. Um, Shekels had KBS before? Why, why are correct. we here? Okay, so it was scheduled for a pretrial pre-COVID now we're here and he obviously has been arrested on this warrant. And so the complaining witness, you don't know if they appeared before, but even if they did, enough time has passed where I would want them to appear again um, or to express their intentions. Absolutely. So one, I'm going to deny defense counsel's motion for dismissal. I will grant the people's request for an adjournment to um, communicate with the complaining witness and then we will um, see if they appear the next time. So today is the 7th. We're going to set it for the 28th. Um, I think, am, have I reached my maximum on the 28th yet?
Yes. No, you have two more left. Okay, we're going to set it for January 28th at 8.35, and the complaining witness must appear. Ask to bond, Ms. Stevenson. He asked the current bond, which I believe to be $100. Uh, I think it's personal, Your Honor. Just ask that the current bond be continued. Oh, okay. So he's been held on something else then. Correct, Your Honor. All right. The bond will continue with no contact with the complaining witness. All right, then we're all set with Mr. Shekels for the 28th. If he, I mean, they just bless. Okay, blessings for God. Um, <laughs> they just feel like they walk past that camera like it ain't on. Deputy, can y'all <laughs> stop walking past the camera? Mr. Shekels is in court. Your Honor, we can stop walking past the camera. However, we. The setup we have is not ideal. So we're doing the best that we can, Your Honor. Oh, okay. So you're trying to get work. Well, why can't y'all put his chair closer to the camera? Then y'all can at least walk behind him. Y'all can't do that? No, 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 we can't, Your Honor. We, okay. There's literally a foot, in a, there's literally an arm's length here. I'm, I'm not gonna have him run on top of the camera. Oh, okay. Well, black, okay. Well, then I won't, I won't be so anal then. All right. Um, Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, I forgot. I lost my train of thought because they was walking past. Uh, what What was I saying? Oh, so whatever he, whatever he's being held on, whatever you're being held on, if he bonds out, Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Shekels, you need to make sure that you have the Zoom information for your court date for the 28th. So if you bond out on the other case, I don't know what what that case is and what your bond is. But if you if you bond out, if it gets dismissed, whatever happens, um, make sure that you get the Zoom ID number for Judge Bryant so that you can Zoom in um, on the 28th so that we don't issue another warrant for your arrest on this case, okay? You're muted. Um, no, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, then we're all set um, with Mr. Um, Shekels and We'll see you back on the 28th at 8.35. Complaining witness must appear. Have a good day, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. All right. Hey, so y'all, can, can, can I ask my attorney one question? Um, you can, I'm gonna send you to a breakout room. I'll send you to the breakout room. You can talk to the lawyer. Thank you very much, Your Honor. All right, so I'm just gonna send them back to number one. All right, so you can go to number one. I'm getting ready to do this retain case. Oh, Mr. Mariah here anyway. Okay, so this is um, Povish. I'm ready on Povish. This is case number 2045749, the people of the state of Michigan versus Scott Allen Povish. The defendant is charged with operating while intoxicated, operating with a high BAC and possession of a a gun uh, while operating under the influence. And today is the date set for final pretrial appearances, please. May it please this honorable no, court. Not you, Mr. Barn. It's oh, Mr. I'm sorry. This is the wrong guy. I apologize. <laughs> yes. Good morning, Your Honor. Joshua Holman on behalf of the people, P number 71971. Good morning, Your Honor, to you and your staff, Brian Berry, appearing on behalf of uh, Mr. Povish, P76788, Your Honor. And Mr. Povish, your name for the record? Good morning, Your Honor. Scott Allen Povish. Okay, Povish. All right, Mr. Povish, we're going to get it correct. It's, it's a short O and not a long O. Okay, today is the day set for a final pretrial. How are we proceeding with respect to Mr. Povish? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mike Plan would like to avail himself of the people's offer. And what is that? Your Honor, we've made an offer uh, to Mr. Povish that if he wishes to plead uh, guilty to count one, uh, the people will reduce that charge to an operating while impaired, which has a statutory maximum penalty of 93 days. Uh, we would also dismiss counts two and three. Uh, in exchange, we would agree to a sentence of one year probation to include a psych and alcohol evaluation and to follow up with recommended therapy and random alcohol testing. The defendant shall continue with alcohol counseling uh, and AA meetings that he is currently seeking. No driving for six months except for work uh, if his license is not suspended. And restitution 
uh, to the property owner, uh, no plea uh, uh, under advisement that people are asking for and, and fines and costs left to the court, Your Honor. I'm sorry, you said no plea under advisement? Correct. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, and so, um, counsel, I'm assuming that you haven't submitted a, a signed advice of rights form to the court. Yes, Your Honor. It, the advice of rights form was on the uh, plea form there, and I had my client initial next to his advice of rights. And did you send that to my clerk? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Um, Madam Clerk, did you send that to me? This morning. Okay, thank you. I'll pull it up. Yep, there it is. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen, um, Mr. Pavish, and then oh, that's it, I think. Yes, okay. Mr. Pavish, I have shared my screen. Do you see what I have shared on my screen? Yes, ma'am. And sir, is that your signature on the bottom? Yes, ma'am. And with respect to your signature, sir, did you um, read or go over these rights with your lawyer? I did, ma'am. And do you understand your rights? Yes, I do. Sir, do you understand that this is a misdemeanor and therefore you do have a right to a trial by pleading guilty? However, you will be giving up your right to a trial. Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by giving up your right to a trial, that means your lawyer will not get to call any witnesses on your behalf and the, your lawyer will also not, not, will not get to question any witnesses that are called on behalf of the prosecution um, and that uh, the court will enter a guilty plea on your behalf. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Has anyone threatened you in any way or promised you anything to get you to plead guilty today? No, ma'am. Do you understand, as is stated in number three, that you may be giving up your right to an appeal if you plead guilty? Yes, ma'am. All right. Sir, raise your right hand for me, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can put your hand down. Um, counsel, who's going to void dear? Because I don't have information. You want me to do it, Josh, or Mr. Holman? Uh, whatever you prefer. I can do it, or you can do it if you're prepared. Prepared. Uh, Mr. Pavish, on or about May 11th, 2020, uh, were you operating a motor vehicle in the location of 18700 Fitzpatrick Street? Yes, sir. Was that the city of Detroit? County of Wayne? Yes, sir. And at that time, prior to uh, operating that vehicle, had you consumed any alcohol? Yes, sir. And that did that impair your ability to operate that vehicle? Yes, sir. And uh, had you had your faculties about you, would you have had better control of that vehicle? Yes, sir. I'm satisfied, Your Honor. I don't know if Mr. Holman has anything to add. Uh, Mr. Holman, are you satisfied? Did you say, I have May 1st. Did you say May 11th? Uh, May 1st, excuse me. May, if, you, if you didn't say May 1st, May 1st. The people are satisfied with that, Your Honor. And so is that the correct date of the offense, May 1st? I, yes, I have May 1st, Your Honor, on the, on the report. Yes, May 1st is the correct date, Your Honor. I apologize. Okay, and then, and so Mr. Pavis, you agree that it was May 1st? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, um, the court is satisfied and I will accept a guilty plea to one count of operating uh, while visibly impaired. In exchange for that plea, the court will dismiss counts two and three and amend count one. <clears throat> With respect to sentencing, Mr. Pavish, the court is going to schedule your sentencing um, for another day because I would like a pre-sentence report and the law requires a substance abuse evaluation. So I'm going to um, order the substance abuse evaluation and the pre-sentence investigation. And then Mr. Barry, your client is um, consenting to being sentenced via Zoom? Yes, Your Honor. All right, then I'm gonna set the sentencing for, um, if you're available, February 11th is a good day for the court. That works, Your Honor. 
All right, so we're gonna set the sentencing for nine o'clock a.m. on Zoom, February 11th. Right, I'm sorry, that was, a, am I getting my months mixed up? Is February 11th a good day for me? Let me check again. I might be getting my months mixed up. That might have been March 11th. She told me I was good. Yep, it's March 11th. Oh, so I don't want to go that far out. I didn't think. Um, what on, do the, I do? on the 11th, you have 11. You have 18 on 11. What do I, am I better on the 18th or is it about the same? February. Because I you have to remember that they're going to put pre-trials. The magistrates are going to put pre-trials on there too. You're better on the 11. Okay, let's keep it the 11th. Let's keep it the 11th, okay? All right, February 11th at nine o'clock. And then, um, counsel, was your client's um, address or phone number on the um, plea recommendation? Um, I don't think so, Judge. Uh, do you want me to email Ms. Muldrow? Email her the address and phone number for your client so we can make sure that probation is able to get in touch with them for the pre-sentence investigation. I sure will, Judge. Okay, then we're all set until the 11th. Everyone have a great day. Thank, Thank you. Honor. And Happy Thank New Year to all. you all. Happy New Year. Happy New, Happy New Year. Year to you, Judge. Thank you very much. All right, much. you're welcome. Okay, Mr. Thomas, I'm gonna get, um, who else do you have? I also have uh, Antonia Burnett and Tony Howard. I don't believe he's here, but I thought you had said earlier that Miss Burnett was. Uh, yeah, Miss Burnett is, and I. Oh, we did. We did Glenda Hall. Let me cross that off. Okay. I'm going to bring in um, Antonia Burnett, and I'm going to bring in um, Mosley and the complaining witness. Can you bring Aubrey Howard so we can see if that's the Howard we're looking for? Mm -hmm. Please. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm, I want everybody to keep yourself muted unless I ask you to unmute. Oh, wait, I brought in the wrong person. Now, I brought in Go Goldston. I didn't mean to do that, but I'll leave him here. Did you already speak to Goldston? I'll set on Goldston, Your Honor. That's not on my docket. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'll leave him here. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, so this is Jacqueline Mosley. This is case number 2045952. The defendant is charged with assault or assault and battery. Today is the date set for pretrial conference. Appearances, please. And please, this honorable court, Darnell Barton, P83363, on behalf of the people. And for the record, Your Honor, I have the complaining witness here, Ms. Stephanie Yader. Uh, Yader, I apologize. Ma'am, can you unmute yourself and just state, state your name for the record, please? Mm Miss mm -hmm. Yider, can you unmute your phone and just state yeah. your name for the record? St Stephanie Lynn Yider. Thank you, ma'am. Bless me. Okay. Um, and for the record, Your Honor, Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Miss Jacqueline Mosley. Miss Mosley, will you please unmute and tell the court your name? Jacqueline Mosley. Okay, today is the day set for a pretrial. How are we proceeding? Your Honor, having um, had negotiations with the people, we would uh, like to avail ourselves of the people's offer, asking the court to adjourn this matter to 16 weeks, Your Honor, to give Ms. Mosley an opportunity 
to engage in some alternative dispute resolution and complete 12 weeks of anger management. At that time, I believe there would be no objection to our motion to dismiss this matter. Your Honor, if I may. You may. I apologize for interrupting. And Ms. Stevenson, and, and I apologize, maybe I didn't uh, state that uh, the mediation portion of it as well. I don't know if I had that in there, and I do apologize, but I, I expressed that to Ms. Yader about a possibility of mediation so that they would be able to uh, interact at the Team Wellness Center should they uh, need to utilize a facility. Um, so, if that's if that's okay with you, I do apologize if I didn't uh, relay that. That's okay. You. I think it's a great idea. I think that's okay. Thank More. you. And I've already talked with Ms. Yader, and she is uh, compliant with that. Uh, she she has done. She she's willing to do that to help Ms. Mosley as well. So. Yeah. Thank you. And um, that's actually a, a a minor detail to which I believe Ms. Mosley. Once I have an opportunity to review that with her, will have absolutely no objection. Okay, so then what about April the 8th or April the 15th? I'm your honor. Hmm? I'm just wondering if that's enough time for us well, to I, get You done. said 12 weeks of anger management, so I counted. Um, that's a little longer than 12 weeks, but we can go to the end of April the 29th. If we could do that, please, your honor. All right. So April the 29th at nine o'clock via Zoom, final pretrial, the complaining witness has appeared today. Therefore, ma'am, you are excused from the final pretrial, meaning you don't have to appear, but you may appear. You may appear at any scheduled court appearance, but you are not required to appear because you appeared today. Okay, anything further? Nothing from the people, Your Honor. Thank you. I, I will forward uh, to Ms. Muldrow contact information for Ms. Mosley. I believe Ms. Muldrow is going to need that for Mr. Yider, Ms. Yider also, so that she can get information over to Wayne County Dispute Solution Center. And other okay, than that, I have nothing further. All right. So you all make sure she gets that. Yes, yes I will. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank okay, you very welcome. much, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Garden. Yes, all thank right. You, thank you. And you all have uh, Miss Yader and Miss um, Mosley. Have a good day. Mosley, I'll be giving you a call later this afternoon. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I'm ready on Burnett. This is that Howard person still hasn't connected. This is case number. Um, 2056318, the people of the state of Michigan versus Antonia Yolanda Burnett. The defendant is charged with license plate illegal use. And today is the date set for a review. Appearances, please. Joseph Thomas on behalf of the probation department, Your Honor. And for the record, Your Honor, Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Antonia Burnett, Your Honor. My recollection is that Ms. Burnett had been represented in this matter by counsel. Um, I think it was an attorney, Robert Trump. Yeah, it, it is, but I'm thinking that she, um, I, I'm believing, this is what I'm believing, that Mr. Plumpy was appointed to her on the felony, they reduced it to the misdemeanor, and now she should be represented by Defender's Office. Ma'am, was Mr. Plumpy your hired attorney or did he get appointed to you by the court? He was appointed to me by the court. Right. So now it'll be, uh, it will be the Defender's Office. But at, at any rate, um, I had a conversation with Mr. Thomas um, while we were waiting for you all to come out of the breakout room. And Mr. Thomas indicated to me that Ms. Burnett kind of fell through the cracks and she had not been assigned a probation officer until just recently. Today is her three month review. So what I'm gonna do is just continue her to her final review. And maybe I don't uh, remember what the conditions of her probation are, but if she can get it done in this three months, I'll still keep her on track to be discharged at the end of the six months. So um, Mr. Thomas, do you all now have Ms. Burnett's contact information? 
Uh, we we did before. It appears that just she was not properly assigned a PO. So right. actually, I'm going to contact Miss Burnett today. I just want to help her get set up for the drug testing. Right. That's the main thing because the other stuff, it looks like it was mostly just um, paying money. Yeah. And okay. So. so so and she did. Mr. Thomas told me that she did reach out to probation. Um, but it, of course, they we were probably caught up in the holiday schedule. So I'm I'm trying not to penalize her for that for not getting assigned a probation officer. So I do want her to get the stuff done. So Mr. Thomas is going to contact her today. We're going to switch over from Mr. Plumpy to the defender's office, and then um, Miss Burnett. Do you have uh, Mr. Thomas? You you said you you do well. Let me just do this. Ms. I have her phone number. Okay. You so you send in the chat to me, and I'll, then I'll have it. We'll be I'll on. text you. That's even better. Thank you. Okay. So they're going to make sure that the defender's office has your phone number and then we'll get you on track. I want to commend you for reaching out because I think everybody should do that. So I commend you for reaching out um, to us and we're going to get you on, on track. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, what, what is her final review date, Madam Clerk? April 1st. Okay. And is that on a Thursday? Make sure. She was assigned to Officer Metz. I'm not sure what day that oh, it she was assigned it to Metz. April first is a Thursday. So let's actually move her to Metz is on Wednesday. So then let's move her to a Wednesday. Well, what's the following week after April first? April fifth. Let's move her to April fifth at nine thirty. Okay. So, Miss Burnett, Miss Burnett, just look for my phone call. I'm going to call you probably in the next half hour here. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'll see you in April, ma'am. Have a good day. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Miss Stevenson. For some reason, I don't know why Miss Mosley is is in the waiting room. I think that's it for me, Your Honor, because the only other guy I had, he didn't show up. But I was going to ask on his matter. I tried to stick in a violation uh, yesterday for him, Mr. Antonio Howard, because he's done just about absolutely nothing on probation for this past year. Okay. So did you send that to Ms. Muldrow? I believe so. I gave it to our clerk here. I believe uh, it was sent to the, I don't know if it got there it, okay, this Ms. morning Muldrow, or yesterday did though. You get a, a, did you get a show cause request for Mr. Um, Howard? His last name is Howard. Yeah, Tony O. Howard, the one he's on our nine o'clock. He's at nine o'clock. I did and I forwarded it to you. No, I didn't forward it to you. But okay, I so not. forward that to me in the paperwork. Don't do a separate, like forward that in the paperwork. So then I'll okay. sign it. Okay. All right. Thank then you. you're all set, Mr. Thomas. Have a good day. You as well. All right. Um, I have Mr. Goldson on screen. Um, while we, oh, I have Mr. Goldston on screen and in the waiting room. What's that about? Mr. Goldston, can you hear us? Oh, well, I'm going to remove this other device. You, you, you logged in on two devices? Oh, I'm going to remove the other one. Okay, so um, we have Goldston and then we have... Um, Navarra, and then we have an unidentified. I'm going to bring in those two, and then who who's going to go to the breakout with the unidentified? I think my guess is going to be um, that that's Mr. Farina's client, Ramos's Nakle. Oh, oh. Well, who told me? Oh, they submitted a discharge. Mr. Farina didn't show. Okay, let me put them back. Okay. Um. All right. So I'm ready on Goldston. This is case number two zero four five eight zero five. The people of the state of Michigan versus Roderick Louver Goldston. The defendant is charged with assault or assault and battery. Today is the date set for pretrial appearances, please. 
May it please this honorable court, Darnell Barton, P83363, on behalf of the people, Your Honor. For the record, Your Honor, Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Roderick Golston. Mr. Golston, please unmute and just tell the court your name, sir. I'm going to help him unmute. Hold on. Okay. All right. Your name, sir? Roderick Goldston. Okay. Today is the day set for pretrial. How are we proceeding? Your Honor, um, on behalf before, of Mr. Be I'm sorry, Ms. Stevenson, to interrupt you. Madam Clerk, can you call Mr. Um, strike that. Don't call him. Do you have in, in the file a, a discharge for Mr. N Knockley? Mr. Farmer is on his way to bring one down. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay, Ms. Stevenson, continue. So, Your Honor, um, I believe that today's pretrial conference was set on December 3rd. Um, and I do not believe the complaining witness, Carlos Ortiz, to be present today's hearing. That being the case, we would move that this matter be dismissed for complainant's failure to appear. In the alternative, Your Honor, we would ask that today's pretrial conference be adjourned to the court's earliest date and that that complaining witness, Carlos Ortiz, be required to be present in order for the people to move forward. Mr. Barton. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I'm actually looking at this, and that's correct. I believe this is the uh, this was scheduled prior, uh, so the people would just ask. Uh, what you mean again, it was scheduled prior? It's at eight thirty on my docket. December December third, correct? No. Oh, he was arraigned sorry. December third. Was he arraigned? He was arraigned on December third. Got it. Right. Okay. So it wasn't so, on my docket previously because it's at eight thirty. Yes, Your Honor. Appreciate that information. So the people would again uh, just ask respectfully at this point if we would have the opportunity to have him appear again, uh, Mr. Carlos Ortiz. So respectfully, we would just ask for another opportunity. And if you do decide to dismiss that, you would do so without prejudice. Your Honor. The day is a day set for pretrial. The complaining witness has failed to appear. This is the first scheduling for pretrial. Madam Clerk, did you say I had one more space on the 28th? Yes. The court is going to um, deny defense counsel's motion for a dismissal and grant the people's request for a one-time continuance. I'm going to continue the matter to January the 28th at 835. If the complaining witness fails to appear at that time, then the court will reconsider the motion for dismissal. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Anything further? Nothing no, further thank before. you, Your Honor. All right, you're welcome. Have a good day. Thank you. See thank you, you on the 28th. You're welcome, sir. All right, I'm ready on Navarra. This is case number. Two zero four four three seven one. The people of the state of Michigan versus Miguel Navarro. The defendant is charged with assault or assault battery. Today is the date set for final pretrial appearances. Please. May it please the court, Darnell Barton, P eight three three six three, on behalf of the people, Your Honor. And uh, Rod Murad, P eight three six six five, on behalf of Mr. Miguel Navarro. Mr. Navarro, if you can unmute yourself and state your name, sir. M Miguel Navarro. All right. Today is the day set for final pretrial. How are we proceeding? So, Your Honor, if I'm correct, uh, pardon me for interrupting, uh, counsel. So, Your Honor, if I'm correct on this one, I have in my notes here that the complaining witness was to appear um, today. Uh, we, we had information that they were uh, incarcerated in a jail in North Dakota. I have not been able to be in contact with them at that point. The complaining witness is incarcerated in, in North Dakota? That's correct, John. Uh -huh. we, we move for uh, discussion. Well, at, at the time that we 
spoke with them. I apologize for interrupting you, Counselor. Uh, at the time that we spoke to them um, for the original pretrial, which I believe was, I, I don't want to give the incorrect date, but it might have been in July. Um, and so we reached out again uh, to no avail, Your Honor. So I'm not quite sure um, where the witness is at this point. Okay. Mr. Marat. I respectfully move for dismissal and, and thank you, Brother Prosecutor. Today is a day for final. Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I, I apologize. I, I I just wanted to ask uh, on behalf of the people if you do decide to dismiss that you do so without prejudice. Yes, always. Well, not always. I guess there are some circumstances where it wouldn't be. But today is a day set for for final pretrial. The complaining witness was required to appear, has failed to appear. The people. Um, the court does take note that the people have indicated that the complaining witness may be incarcerated in an out-of-state um, prison facility. Um, and um, I, I, I do um, take that into consideration. However, the court is going to grant defense counsel's motion. I'm going to dismiss the matter. It is a dismissal without prejudice. Mr. Navarro, that means that if they locate that witness and the witness still um, you know, can proceed with the case, then the charges may be reissued. So if it, if you get something that says, you know, this case has come back up, don't ignore it and say, no, the judge dismissed it. I'm dismissing it without prejudice, which means they could reissue it should they locate that witness, okay? I understand you, Your Honor. Okay, all right. And then Mr. Navarro, um, we're gonna mail you a copy of the dismissal. We are on live on YouTube, so I don't want you to give me your full address, but can you please give me the numbers only, the numbers only to your street address? That would be 5502. Madam Clerk, is that what you have? No. All right, Mr. Navarra, do you have something that you can write the court's phone number down? Uh, yes, ma'am, hold on a second. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, it's 965. 965. And of course, it's area code 313, but it's 965 2295. 95. Okay. So call the courtroom so that um, you can give my clerk the address you want us to mail a copy of the um, dismissal so you'll have it for your records, okay? Okay. Thank All you right. very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too, man. Bye bye. Good luck. All right, let's see if this Mr. Howard, this Aubrey Howard person, I don't know why they're not in video. And then Mr. Ramsey's don't have video or sound, so I can't even do nothing with him. So I'm gonna remove him. And then I'm gonna give Aubrey Howard about less than a minute to unmute. Okay, and then Aubrey Howard, why you don't have video? We can't see you. Oh, okay. Why is that? Let me say the post oh, has oh. opened. And bad. then the other question while you're trying to figure out your video is uh -huh. we don't we don't know who you are in terms of you're not on our docket. What, is your name Aubrey Howard? Um I was my son Tonio Howard, he was scheduled for review today. And I was uh, seeing if he was in court because he was incarcerated, but I haven't heard from him. So I thought maybe I could see him today in court. Okay, thank you for that information. So where was your son incarcerated? Um, he was in incarcerated at the detention center. Okay, so and no he's a mental health patient. Okay, is he, is he, well, strike that, never mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no, he's not here. Okay. Um, so, Miss Stevenson, can you contact the detention center, and then um, we can see if uh, I'll adjourn him. Who, who was his probation officer, Miss um, Muldrow? Um, Not you, Miss Howard. Oh, okay. My clerk. Thomas. Okay. So, right. Um, all right, uh, ma'am. I'm going to send you to a breakout room with okay. the prosecutor's office. And then they can get you get your contact information, and Miss Stevenson will um, 
because he, he's scheduled for review. So I, I was going to just adjourn him anyway. Okay. Um, he, he didn't, they didn't bring him. So Ms. Stevenson, okay. she'll have to do a little bit of checking. So I'm going okay. to take you to a breakout room with the lawyer and she can get your contact information and then she can um, contact you. So Okay, thank you. All right, so you have to accept to join the breakout room. Okay. Oh, wait. Yeah. Did you accept? Did you see it? Oh, yeah, she did. She left. Okay. Okay, well, then that.